I'm Gary Harrington, and welcome to the Power of Prudence weekly wrap-up, which I plan to post on, for the next few weeks on Fridays. And I want to make this a commentary on the current events that affect or impact the safety and security of yourself and your family. You know, <laughs> safety and security aren't always fun subjects. But what I propose is that on the Fridays, at least for the next few weeks, that we take a few minutes to go over some of the things that are happening in our society right now that do impact your, your safety and the safety of your family, as well as impact how we feel about our well-being and the peace of mind that we have about our families. Now, you know, I'm proposing we do this on Fridays, and that's so that, hey, it's the end of the work week. Let's take a few minutes to contemplate the problems that we see in the world and formulate some strategies and make some plans to deal with it and ways to pour into our families that will help them make it through these times. Hey, then after that, it's Friday. Let's, let's you know, close out the week and move forward with enthusiasm to enjoy uh, our time on the weekends and our loved ones, uh, you know, with a plan of how we're going to pour into them to help them deal with the world that we have today. Hey, again, use the weekends to recharge and rest and be ready to begin the next week. But let's just take these few minutes to, you know, cover a subject that may be at times unpleasant, but is a reality and is a way that we give to our families. So let's, let's start. Hey, this week, uh, we've seen a lot about, there's been news of mass violence uh, and continued news of random attacks and violence that are all over the U.S., particularly, you know, in some of the bigger cities. But, you know, it just seems like it's an epidemic of violence that's growing to more and more places, is unpredictable. You know, it, no longer can you say, well, I'll stay away from seedy places and these certain types of activities, that'll keep me or my family safe. Now random attacks are happening with increasingly frequency, you know, with increasing frequency. And, uh, and, and they're getting more and more violent. It leaves, it can leave you feeling like I'm helpless, what can I do? Um, and I'm, I'm gonna really try hard not to get into the political aspects of, of this. You know, there's, there's a lot of talk now with elections coming up shortly about um, law enforcement, uh, prosecutions, those type things, uh, attitudes toward police. And, and, you know, I will do my best for the most part to stay away from comment political commentary um, and focus, uh, I, I want to focus on real strategies that you can use uh, no matter where you fall on the spectrum, but to protect yourself and, and your family. So yeah, it's been a rough week uh, as far as uh, mass violence, uh, random violence, and, and attacks on police. So um, one of the things I want you to consider, and, and, and we'll talk more about techniques and, and, and some individual strategies in the coming weeks, but now I'd like you just to consider the basic principles behind this. And that's that um, even in the best of times, if you cede all of your personal safety and security to others, police, courts, law enforcement, bodyguards, whoever, then you're become dependent on them. 
even in the best of times, when before all the defunct police uh, movement came forward, and all you you had, depending on where you lived, a variance in police response time, and that could be as short as five minutes, maybe if it's a well policed community, but it can be thirty or forty five minutes. Random acts of violence, or even planned mass violence or terror attacks, they're usually over in just a few minutes, well before police can respond to any of, the, of these attacks. So there is a certain level that if you want to be sure, if you want to be certain that you have a capability to respond, that you have to take some of that responsibility on yourself. The more you depend on somebody else to provide for your safety, your security, or anything else, then the more, to be honest, enslaved you are to them. If you want freedom, then freedom involves responsibility. If I want to take care of myself and my family, the more free I am, the more responsibility I incur to be prepared to make the decisions and take the right actions to protect myself and my loved ones. You know, you can't, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I think it's, it's a lazy man's game to just expect that somebody else is always going to take care of you. And now with elections coming up, I see a lot of finger point of um, in both directions regarding safety and security because that's a they know that hits to the heart of every family member and and, and particularly for men who are responsible for their families that uh, you know one one group of people wants to blame police or guns or certain groups of people and then the other side wants to blame you know, efforts to diminish police and and uh, the other side for that. And, you know, the truth is neither, it doesn't matter which political side or how your views towards that are, that if you want the ultimate peace of mind and you want to be prepared for whatever could happen, then you have to take the responsibility to prepare yourself and your family to face life-threatening situations and negotiate, um, you know, disagreements that get that have the potential to become violent. So, you know, how how do you do that? Well, the, I think, and again, we'll discuss details in in the coming weeks but for right now to start I, I think that I call on each person that is concerned about these things to really look at take a look inside and take a look at at your priorities and your schedule how how much effort are you putting into preparing yourself for your loved ones to face violence. You know, do you do your homework before you go somewhere? Do you, have you trained yourself to respond to different situations? Do you have alternate plans? When you are going about your day, whether that's walking around, driving your car in a public venue, how vigilant are you? Are you busy listening to something or looking at your phone uh, and not paying attention to what's going on around you. Well, hey, you know, if you are, if you look at these videos of the random acts of violence, the people that are picked as victims are that person that's just walking around not paying attention to anything. You know, that's, you could decrease greatly your chance of being attacked in random violence if you just detach yourself from whatever distractions you have and pay attention to what's going on in your immediate, immediate environment. 
you know, we'll talk about that in a later week. It's, it's situational awareness. Um, and I'm not saying that uh, you have to walk around your whole life, everywhere you go, always anxious, ready, watching for an attack everywhere. No, that's not how we live our lives. But you have to have the experience and the knowledge to know when you need to amp up your game and when you can relax. You know, and, and again, that changes the random violence that's going on now means that when there are certain places and times that we might go that we could relax before, that now we have to be paying more attention. So, you know, it, it ta this, is, this effort to make yourself and your family more safe is going to take some time. It's going to require that you become intentional about building the capacity to deal with life-threatening situations. So, hey, what I ask that you would do this week and this weekend is to take that inventory of how you're living your life and how important is personal safety and security to you. And, you know, if, if you decide that it is a priority, then hey, join me again next Friday to do another wrap up and go into a little detail about ways that you can make yourself and your family safer and more secure. Again, we're going to call this the Power of Prudence Weekly Wrap Up. Thank you.